It's uh, 1030 in the morning, just a few months ago, and I'm just finishing up teaching my fifth graders, 22 of them, the mathematical properties of a rhombus, which I'm sure is extremely important information that they will use someday in their lives. <laughs> and I tell them to go get their snack, and they all head off to their lockers. And I go back to my desk, I retreat to my bag, I reach my hand in and I pull out a single sleeve of strawberry frosted Pop-Tarts. A single sleeve because I cannot eat all the Pop-Tarts that are in a room at one time. And so I have to deny myself all but the one sleeve. I love Pop-Tarts. They are they're thin, rectangular prisms of perfection. They are, they're like a food technology, really. They are pastry and fruit and frosting and sprinkles all pulled together into something you can hold in your hand and it lasts 10,000 years if you don't open the bag. <laughs> I love them. And so I take my single sleeve and I go back to the class and the kids are regrouping. And honestly, I cannot believe what I see even though I see it every day. It's not an exaggeration. Nine of my students are eating seaweed for a snack today. These slivers of seaweed, kind of shaped like my Pop-Tart, in these plastic containers that are oily, and the kids want them. No one sent them like, you have to eat it. They like the seaweed. I don't know when seaweed became a snack. When I was a kid, seaweed was a gross thing that got stuck on your foot when you were at the ocean, and now kids are putting it in their mouths aggressively. And those that don't have seaweed are either asking the ones that do have seaweed if they can have some, or they've got Tupperware bins with like Mongolian seeds and like grasses from the prairies of Peru. And like there's a kid with a banana and it actually looks like he's unhealthy compared to everybody else in the room. And they see my Pop-Tarts and they start making fun of me like they always do. They say, you're killing yourself, like preservatives and coloring. And kids are telling me Pop-Tarts are bad and it makes no sense to me. And it's the story of my life, truly. I believe that food shaming is one of the last bastions of publicly accepted bigotry. You can walk through the world eating poorly and people will give you a hard time about it all the time. And we live in a world where this is true, you can take a miniature pony on a plane as a therapy animal and we're all like, that's fine, no problem. <laughs> And I was in New York two weeks ago. I met a guy who pierced his eyelid. And the piercing was so large, he couldn't open that eye. And we were all like, that's great. You do your thing, man. <laughs> and I once had a student who had to use the faculty bathroom because he had to take all his clothes off to poop. And we were like, that's your jam. That's totally cool. But I walk around with a Pop-Tart. <laughs> And kids give me a hard time. Or if you drink Diet Coke, you know this is true. Walk through the world with a Diet Coke for a week. Half a dozen people will stop you and tell you, you're drinking poison. And it sounds silly, but it really hurts to a degree, at least. Because I grew up on food that came out of cans and boxes and bottles. That is what I ate as a child. And it's my connection to my childhood. I believe food should be healthy, but it should make you happy too. And when I eat Pop-Tarts, I think about my mother who's passed away and my father who's not in my life anymore. It makes me feel good. And these kids are not making me feel good. I hate every one of them. <laughs> and the one day that I can actually enjoy my food, I have, it's, it's the day before Thanksgiving. I have a Thanksgiving feast every year in my classroom. All the kids bring in foods of their choices and it's like cultural dishes and family recipes and stuff that they just love. And they all bring it in and the parents come and circle the room and one by one each kid stands up and they tell us about their food. They say, this is my nut, this is my tofu, I've brought sushi for you today. They all bring this food that I would never touch and everyone thinks it's the greatest thing. And it's, it's not a great day for me except I have a plan. So after everyone's gone through their food, they all turn to me and they say, Mr. Dix, what did you bring today? And so I walk over to my file cabinet and I pull it open and I take out a can opener, which truly half the kids have never seen in their lives to begin with. So they're all like, what is that? And then I reach into the file cabinet and I take out a can and I bring it over to the table and I've got a white dinner plate. It's the right one, I've tested it. Big white dinner plate and I hold the can up it's cranberry sauce. It's canned cranberry sauce, which truly none of the kids have seen. They've all been eating real cranberries and twigs and berries mixed up in a bowl that they don't like. And so I start to use the can opener to open it. And as I open it, I tell them, 
Boys and girls, my Thanksgivings were like this. I had potatoes out of boxes and stuffing out of a box and carrots and corn out of a can, cranberry sauce and even brown bread out of a can. And so I open the top of that can and I hold it 18 inches because I've worked this <laughs> over the white dinner plate. And one of the fathers says, you gotta cut a hole. I'm like, please, this is not my first time around the block, buddy because you don't need to cut a hole on the top if you know what you're doing. Just a little squeeze. A tiny little squeeze will cause that cranberry sauce to fall the 18 inches to the white dinner plate. The kids have never seen it before. It's a food shaped like the container that it came in and it looks just like the container. And so it hits the white dinner plate from 18 inches and it's amazing the action on this thing because it will simultaneously flip, spin and turn all at once on the plate and the kids lose their minds. They can't believe what is happening. And the parents, they all are like, they, they stand with their arms folded and they start rolling their eyes. But the kids are so excited and it's the moment when everyone agrees that my unhealthy food is amazing. And so I slice it up for all the kids and everyone tastes it and they all love it because it's sugar with a little bit of cranberry. And when it runs out, they're all sad and I allow that sadness to just sit for a minute. And then I go over to my file cabinet, I take out the four other cans of cranberry sauce that I bring every single time and we eat through all of that. And the tofu and the sushi and the Bavarian nuts, they're all ignored but my cranberry sauce is loved. And it's a great day for me, and it's planned, and it's intentional, and I know I'm kind of being a jerk about it, but it's important to me, and I think it's important to them, too. I really believe it's a lesson. It's a lesson that you have to expect, accept me. If you're going to accept miniature ponies and weird piercings and people who take their claws off to poop, you're going to accept my Diet Coke, and you're going to accept my Pop-Tarts. And frankly, I think that is a lesson that's much more important than the mathematical properties of a rhombus will ever be. And so I do that every day before Thanksgiving, hoping that those kids will accept me for who I am. Thank you.